Amen, amen. Who drove their sled today? You've left your lights on and you're supposed, no, I'm just kidding. Amen. Come on, lift your hands towards heaven. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Pray this prayer with me. Say, dear God, give me eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive all that your word has for me today. In Jesus' name, I receive it by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on and give the Lord another praise offering. Well, we're starting a new series today. Ah. You guys like no dancing, though? Some of you will try to dance to this. Amen? It wouldn't look good at all. Just so you know. Amen? So, um... Pull out your notebooks, amen, and your Bibles, and write down Mission Possible, amen. No, oh, this is a good, I went to see the Mission, or was it uh, Mission Impossible? There's like 35 of them. <laughs> I'm wondering when Tom Cruise is going to get too old to even be up there, you know. But, uh, but uh, this is a, an awesome title for an awesome uh, series I believe is going to be a blessing to you. Mission possible, believing for the impossible, amen? So go ahead and put that up on your, on your notebook, amen? And I want to start by saying this, uh, nothing is by accident, okay? I know a lot of times we, we believe and, and just saying, well, this happened, it just was by accident. No, nothing is by accident, okay? Um, especially when it's concerning God, okay? Especially when it's concerning God. Now, it's, uh, it's been a little while back. Um, the Lord gave me a word twice. And um, I don't remember if it was uh, Sunday morning or a Wednesday night or both. But the Lord gave me a word two times for the church. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, tell my people to believe for the hard things. He said, tell them I want them to believe for the hard things. I know somebody's saying, well, it's hard to even believe for the easy things. Come on. But that's what the Lord said. Tell my people to believe for the hard things, the things that seem easy impossible in their lives and in their circumstance how many of you know all of us could probably name one or two things that we would like to see happen but in in our mind and even in our heart we think man that is almost impossible to see that happen right so god reminds us when we look at this scripture go with me to luke Luke chapter 1, and the angel of the Lord is speaking to Mary. Come on. The angel of the Lord is speaking to Mary, and he's telling Mary, you know, that she's going to conceive a baby, okay? So if you look at verse 34, Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and the power, everybody say power, the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And then the angel goes on to say, And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she is also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. Verse 37. For with God, come on. For for with God nothing shall be impossible. Come on. 
For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. So I want you to write that down. Nothing. I mean, there's several scriptures in the Bible where it talks about nothing is impossible for God. Okay? There may be things that are impossible for us to do or accomplish, but there is nothing impossible for God, amen, when he wants to do things, amen? So I want you to write this down. God is wanting us to take him out of the box. Now, I want, I want you to think about this for almost eight years. By the way, we're going to be eight years old in October Amen. Or well, yeah, it's actually eight. We're eight years old this month. <laughs> Come on. And I was thinking December because that's when we actually moved into the building. But uh, in eight years, there is this repetitive message that God keeps bringing. You know, I actually get excited about ministering in this dimension of what we're going to be talking about. But how many of you know sometimes God has to remind us over and over and over again? Otherwise, we forget, okay? And God doesn't want us to forget. He wants us to believe Him for greater and greater things, amen? And so God is wanting us to take him out of the box. In other words, a lot of times we put God in a box and we don't allow him to go beyond in our lives into greater and greater things that he's wanting us to see and experience. Amen? So go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. This is a really powerful scripture. Now I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Okay? Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. I'm going to read that in the King James Version. Everybody there? Look what it says. Verse 9 says, but as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Now I know a lot of times people look at that and they say, well, he's talking about heaven. He's talking about that the Lord has prepared heaven and great things in heaven for us, okay? I believe that's partially true, but I believe that God has also prepared greater things for us to see and experience and encounter with Him, amen? Now listen, guys, there's a lot fewer of you here this morning, so you're going to have to be a lot more engaged. Okay? I know this today was a sleepy morning. I, I had to drag my, my, myself out of the bed. Amen? Amen? So look at the next part here. It says, but God, but God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. So the, the thought in this two verses here is that God has already revealed these things. We should already know or be walking in that dimension of the unseen or the things that other people. Because how many of you know the world, the world doesn't see the things that we see? Are you with me? The world doesn't see the things that we see. The world looks at us and they look at the church and they, they don't see the beauty that we see. Um, we're going to do a series on the tabernacle uh, here in the near future, but when the tabernacle was built, uh, it was the tent in the wilderness, 
And from the outside, if you would look over the fenced area or from where the outer court was, and you would look at the tabernacle, which had the inner court and in the Holy of Holies, on the outside, it looked ugly. It was covered with badger skin. Okay, So from the outside, looking in, people would say, man, that, that, that tent is ugly. But when the priest would walk inside the holy place and into the holy holy, it was lined with gold. Had fine linens and all these different tapestries and jewels and all that. So there was beauty within, but without, it was not appealing. And that's what the world looks. The world looks at the church and says, man, why, why, are, you, why are you going to church? What is it? What makes you get up in the morning, come on, on a snowy morning and go to church? What is it? We see the beauty inside that the world doesn't see from outside. Are you with me? So listen, I want you, I want you to write this down. We, we, we are seeing now, as, as the body of Christ, we are seeing and experiencing God's presence, His love, His power, okay? And so we understand why it looks foolish to the world, but to us, it is absolutely a blessing. That's why we come. Are you with me? But now look at this, okay? The thought in this scripture here is saying that we should be seeing these things, but we should be seeing greater and greater things. Are you with me? We have not even began, listen, I want you to think about this. We have not even begun to scratch the surface of the things that our supernatural God wants to reveal to his children. This scripture should be true, but can I tell you that most Christians have never even gone further and deeper into what God has for them. Come on. Don't get quiet. Let me get to my notes here. So we've not even scratched the surface of what God wants to take us to. I want you to write this down. Don't let your brain get in the way of your blessing. Don't let your brain get in the way of your blessing. See, for so many, so for so much time, the church should be uh, functioning on a different dimension, but we have grown into a state that we're more moved by the physical things than the spiritual things. So the scripture, the scripture. I'm, I, let me get back to this in uh, in First Corinthians. I'm sorry, I had the wrong scripture here. First Corinthians chapter two, and go to verse fourteen. Look what it says here. This is this is when I read this, I had to I had to uh, type it up in the. Uh, New Living Translation, because look what it says. It says, but people who are, aren't or are not spiritual. Okay? And I want you to write this down. What does that mean, people who aren't spiritual? Okay? A lot of times people will say, well, that's people who are unsaved. Okay? But can I tell you that we have people in churches today that are not spiritual. They might be religious, okay? But just, just because you come and sit in church doesn't mean you're spiritual. What does it mean to be spiritual? Write this down, okay? It means to be spiritually minded or kingdom minded. Okay? Spiritually minded or kingdom minded. So it says people who are not spiritual or spiritually minded can't receive these truths from God's Spirit. Okay, why? Because they're trying to think this through. They're trying to process, don't listen, don't process what is spiritual with your, with your mind. 
okay? Because look what it says. It all sounds foolish to them, and they can't understand it. For only those who are spiritual can understand what the Spirit means. So what is going on in the body of Christ is that we've got a lot of people who are religious, who go to church. Come on. Even the devil goes to church. But we have a lot of people who are religious-minded, but not spiritually minded. And so what does that mean? That means that they're not receiving everything that God has for them. Are you with me? And if we can't get rid of that mindset, then we're never going to see the greater things or the things that seem impossible. Come on. So, again, I want you to think of this. We have not even, we have not even scratched the surface of what the potential is. Do you know, listen, I want you to think about this. Do you know how many millions and billions of angels there are? The Word of God calls them ministering spirits. Do you know, listen, I, I'm just, I'm wanting, I'm wanting to get, get you to a place where you understand, okay, that we sometimes settle. Do you know how many Christians literally don't know that they have access to ministering spirits, which are the angels that God has set for us, and that they are here for us to be a blessing to us? Do you, do you know that most Christians never, ever take advantage of the angels that are there for us? So I'm saying that because what I'm saying is, is that we have not even tapped into the ability that God has and what he wants to do. I mean, we just, we go on living our lives, we're hoping for the best, we're hoping that somehow we get a breakthrough, you know, sometimes we pray a little bit, but we're not believing for the greater things. And if we can't get past that, then something's wrong, okay? So... Let me tell you a story. There was, there was a, a man who died, and um, his neighbors, you know, knew that he lived in a house, and they knew that he was poor. And uh, they hadn't seen or heard from him, so they sent the police in to check on him, and they found him dead in his bed. He had died from malnutrition, come on, and starvation. So as they're picking him up and putting him to take his body out on the stretcher, they notice something sticking out of the bed. They opened it up and there was millions of dollars stuffed in his mattress. Come on. He had the potential, listen, he had the potential to better his life, but he wasn't thinking correctly in order to utilize that blessing. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to get you out of a mindset and a thinking that says, hey, I can only believe for this, but I can't believe for this. Come on. Give God praise. So write this down. I want you to write this down. According to 1 Corinthians, okay, the scripture that we just read, according to this scripture, we have access to a supernatural dimension or a heavenly dimension. If we're children, listen, if we're children of the light and we're children of God, we have access to heavenly dimensions in the Lord. Those that are unsaved don't have that access. That's what 1 Corinthians is saying, okay, is that we have, we have access to see the things that others don't see. This is a heavenly dimension, okay, and there's others that don't simply enter this, okay, because they don't understand it. But if you belong to him, you have this access 
to that spiritual. Dr. Hopp was teaching the other day. He says, when we pray, it opens up spiritual heavenly portals, okay, where God can then come in and intervene and work in our behalf and bless us in, in our behalf. Amen? So a lot of times we don't realize that. And we live life, and God's saying, man, you, there's so much more potential that you have access to, but you're not using it. Come on. We're like that man. We're, we're, we're starving. We're destitute, but we're sitting on millions of dollars. We are sitting on potential that is heavenly potential. Amen? So go with me to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. I love this scripture. Ephesians Chapter 3, verse 20. Now, the goal, the goal of this introduction, okay, is to get you to believe and think and look for more, okay? Not just say, hey, you know, I'll take whatever I, trickles down to me. But to believe more. We serve a supernatural God. We need to believe for supernatural things to occur in our lives. Are you with me? Now look what it says. Now all glory to God. New Living Translation. Who is able. Okay. So I want you to write this down. God is absolutely capable of doing the impossible in your life. He's, he has no shortage of power. Okay? And I want you to write this down right next to that. And he is willing as long as it fits within his will. Are you with me? I remember a story of, a, of an evangelist who was traveling from one state to another and he was going, he was ministering in one church and was going to another and it was hundreds of miles away and he turned down a wrong road and he got lost. Okay, some of you probably remember this story. He ran out of gas. Okay. But he had gallons of water in his trunk of his car. Guess what he did? He prayed and he said, Lord, if you can turn water into wine, come on, you can turn water into gas. Come on. <laughs> And he took that water and poured it. And listen, I'm just telling you. Sometimes, I mean, most of you would strap that water to your back and you would hike <laughs> to the next town. Amen? We have to believe. Listen, that, somebody would say, that's impossible. But he poured those gallons of water into his gas tank. And he started that car, and he drove another hundred and some miles to a gas station. Come on. I know what you're saying. That's impossible, right? Listen, can I tell you, there's going to come a time, it may not be now, it may not be in five years, it may not be in ten, but we are going to have to depend on God and look to God in a way that we are not familiar with. Man, we just, we have it so easy. Come on. People in other countries, man, they have to, they have to really trust for God to do out of the ordinary things. Amen? So look at this. God is able and he's willing. Okay? And look what it says here. Go back to... Uh, uh, let's go back to Ephesians. On in the King James version, it says according 
to the power that worketh in you. Do we have that up there? So I want you to ask yourself this question today, okay? Ask yourself this question. Can we think of more? Because he says, listen, he says he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we think or ask, okay? Are, are, we, are, are we even capable of thinking and believing God for more? And if we do, then do we take the next step and do we ask? Are you with me? See, sometimes we're so caught up with saying that's impossible that we don't even ask. Are you with me? Some of what we are experiencing, this is what the Lord spoke to me, some of what we are experiencing right now is so new to many people. In other words, just coming to a spirit-filled church is new. It's different. Just seeing that there's prayer and altar and that there's people that are praying for the sick and all that, some of that in itself is new, okay, or just on a basic level. And there is so much more. Are you with me? There is so much more. We're not even tapping into the power of God in what is, we are capable of seeing. Okay? So, we are either not asking and our mind has limited us. Go with me to Matthew chapter 14 and verse 22. I'm going to read from the King James Version in this. Okay? Matthew chapter 22, or I'm sorry, Matthew 14, Matthew 14, you're, you're in the same vicinity, and go to verse 22, now, God, I, I, I want you to think about this, God is wanting us to unlock Unlock his potential in our lives. Are you with me? Because God is, God is so ready to do greater things. But can I tell you, the body of Christ has fallen asleep. And we're just happy to get into a church service and feel God's presence. And God's saying, wait a minute here. There's so much more. Are you with me? There's so much more potential. But we go through life and we just kind of like, well, whatever is handed to me, whatever comes about, whatever, you know. And we don't seek God and see him in his strength and his ability to do more in our lives. So then what do we do? We settle. Okay? Well, I want I want to get I want to get into some truth here about what the Lord is saying is possible, okay? And some of you're looking like deer in the headlights. You're like, "Uh oh, here we go." Okay? So 14 22 Everybody there? Now, we've read this before, but I I, want to bring some new stuff out of this, okay? It says, In straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, look what it says, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. Now, you say, well, that's the Son of God. He can do whatever he wants. If he wants to walk on water, he can walk on water, right? But I want you to look at this. 
When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. Okay? Now, if you remember this, in another series, I was telling you, they didn't recognize him. They didn't, listen, I want you to get this. They did not recognize him in that way. A lot of times, listen, we don't receive things or it brings fear because we don't recognize him in that way. We're like, man, I'm just familiar with just, you know, going to church and doing this and, and you know, praying. And, but we don't recognize when the Lord shows up in a very dynamic new way. So look what it says. When they saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. Saying, this is the spirit, they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spoke unto them and he said, hey, it's me. I, I know you haven't seen me in this dimension before, but I'm doing something new. I'm, I'm letting you know that 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 that." All power is given to me. I can do the impossible. Amen. I can walk on water. Are you with me? And look what happens here. He says, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Now look at, uh, the doesn't, story doesn't end there. And then Peter answered him and said, Lord. What did he say? If, if, if it's you. If it's you. Let me come onto the water. And Jesus said, no. He said, no, you're just, you're just, you know, you're just a man. You know, you're not the son of God. Uh, That's, that's only for me. Only I can walk on water, right? Is that what Jesus told him? What did he say? He says, and he said to him, come. Come. Listen, I want you to see in this scripture what the Lord is saying even to the church today. Because a lot of us are thinking, man, God isn't giving us the green light to go further, deeper, and, and into greater things and experiences in his presence. We're thinking, man, God's going to tell us no if we ask him, right? But look what he says. He says, he says Lord, if it's you, Listen, I want you to write this down. Peter did the unthinkable. Peter, listen, Peter was a weird guy. I mean, one minute he's doubting and and running for his life, and the next minute he's full of faith. I mean, the guy was all over. How many of you know he's just like us? Come on, how many of you know we're all strange? But Peter did the unthinkable. He said, man, I'm, I'm going to do something that everybody else is thinking but not asking. Peter said, I'm going to be the one to ask. Man, what can it hurt, right? He said, hey, if it's you, if this is you, okay, and this is what we need to be saying today. Lord, if this is you and you want us to take you out of the box, if you want us to believe you for more, if you want us to tap into the supernatural, if you want us to see greater things and you want us to see things that are just the miraculous happening, happening in the body of Christ, see, the, 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 way, the way that with the church will see the final move of God or revival or the outpouring is by changing the way that we think and believe. We hold God in a box and we say, well, Lord, you know, we can come to church and we can feel your presence and somebody can speak in tongues and somebody can get healed, but but we're going to cap it right there. Are you with me? Jesus Jesus saying, hey, all you, all you got to do is ask. All you got to do is ask, Right? So Peter did the unthinkable. He asked. And Jesus didn't say no. And what Peter was saying when he said, Lord, if this is you, he's saying, Lord, if you are in it, if you are in it, 
let me be a part of it. That's what Peter was saying. If, you, if, if this is really you, it, you know, and, and you're willing to let, I want to be a part of it. Do you see what I'm saying? God wants us to believe and start to believe for the impossible. Come on. The things that seem to you like, man, I can't, I'm not going to get through this. How am I ever going to get over this? How am I ever going to overcome this addiction? How am I ever going to overcome this problem that I'm encountering in my life? It looks like it's impossible. The odds are against me. This is a giant. This is a mountain. But God is saying, hey, what is impossible for man is, impos- is possible for God. Amen? So write this down. The Lord is raising up today water walking Christians. He's raising up some Peters that will just be tenacious enough to say, you know what, man, I I don't know if it'll happen, but I'm going to ask. I I don't know, I don't know, but I'm going to ask. I'm going to step out in faith, okay? So I want you to write this down. The goal is not to walk on water. That is an example in this story that gives us faith and hope to believe, okay? The goal is for us to believe for more. Peter could have just said, you know what, I'm not going to even ask him. He's the son of God. You know, let him keep walking on the water, okay? But God is wanting us to believe for more. So write this down. This is about moving from dreaming and just believing and asking and hoping to actually seeing. I'm, 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 listen, I'm here to tell you to get ready for the impossible. Come on. I'm, I'm here to tell you, get ready for the impossible. You know, because you're like, well, I'm not, I'm, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. Well, listen, we have to train and, and get out of the way that we think and act and process everything. Are you with me? So we may, I, 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 want, I want you to write this down. We must make a push past religiosity to reality, okay? And it has to start somewhere. Look at your neighbor, Tom. It has to start somewhere, okay? It has to start somewhere. Listen, we, you know, it's great when we stumble upon miracles and breakthrough. Has that ever happened to anybody? You know, you're going through something, but all of a sudden, God does a miracle, and you're like, wow, that's awesome. But God wants us to believe and walk in a dimension that is for the supernatural all the time in our lives. Now listen, listen, you know, I know what somebody's going to say. They're going to say, well, wait a minute here. We can't live in a dimension that is always about miracles and signs and wonders and and believing for the impossible. Because let me tell you about some of the impossibilities, okay? Some of you have been believing for a family member to get saved forever. Come on. Some of you have grandchildren that you're like, man, I just, I, I keep praying and I keep believing, you know, that, that someday they'll get saved. And, and it's almost seeming like it's an impossibility. A spouse that is serving God or a child that is serving God, okay? This, this is what I'm talking about, believing for the impossible. Some of you have been praying and asking God for a home. Come on. Listen, I want you to write this down. If it fits into God's will, okay, God can make it possible. So you can't go, you know, praying for a pink Cadillac Believing for that as an impo- how many of you know if you're already driving one? Write that down. It has to fit into God's will. But I want you to think about this. I want you to think about this. Okay, doesn't mean that in a in a in a in a time in in serving God and believing for the impossible that we're not going to go through storms and trials. That's not what I'm talking about. 
I'm not, I'm not giving you a false idea that, hey, we're never going to have storms, we're never going to have trials. No, I'm saying that in the midst of it, we can believe God for the impossible things. Okay? Look at this. Philippians chapter 4. Look at Philippians chapter 4. How many of you know that Paul, Paul, the Apostle Paul, was a man that seen the impossible possible? Come on. How many, listen. How many of you know Paul, Paul was uh, on an island getting firewood and a snake, a viper, bit him on the hand. And all of the people from that island, man, they made up some popcorn and they sat back. They said, man, let's watch the show. This guy's going to swell up like a balloon and explode. Come on. They were waiting. They were watching. They said, man, this guy's going to die. Check it out. And how many of you know that Paul stepped into the impossible? Come on. He should have died, and he was, listen, he was walking in the possible. But it doesn't mean that he didn't go through shipwreck. He wasn't, you know, persecuted and and going through things. Listen, those are things that we're going to go through. But I'm talking about believing God and living in 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 a season, in a time where we believe him for the impossible. Okay? Stretch your faith in this. Look at this. Paul says, how I praise the Lord for you being concerned about me again. He says, I I have always been, I know you have always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. Okay? In other words, they were blessing Paul's ministry financially. He says, not that I was ever in need. So look what Paul says here. For I have learned how to be content. With whatever I have, he said. Verse 12, I know how to live on almost nothing. Come on. How many of you know there's times where we encounter storms, we encounter things in our life? He says, or I've learned how to live with everything. I've learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it's with a full stomach or empty, whether with plenty or little. Look what he says in verse 13. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. So what was he saying? He was saying, listen, you know, doesn't mean that we're not going to encounter things in this life, but Paul was still a man that believed and in, in trusted God for the impossible things. And God showed him those. Now look at, here's two scriptures here. Go with me to Ephesians chapter one. Ephesians chapter one. Verse 15. Everybody there? This is Paul praying for the Ephesians, telling, he sends them this letter. Look what he says. Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus... Your love for God's people everywhere. I have not stopped thanking God for you. And then look what he says. I pray for you constantly. This is Paul. He's telling him, look, this is, this is what I'm doing in my prayer for you. Okay? He says, I'm asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spirit spiritual wisdom. Remember remember we were talking about being spiritually minded? Okay? That's what Paul is praying here. He's saying, I'm hoping that God would give you spiritual wisdom. In other words, allow you to see things that you normally wouldn't see. He says, an insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. Verse 18, I pray that your hearts would be flooded with light 
so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. Now look at verse 19. I also pray that you will understand. Everybody say understand. Okay, look what he says. I, will, I, I, will, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power. One says toward us, us to us word, right? Who believe in him, this is that same mighty power. What is, what is he saying here in the scripture? He's saying, he says, my prayer for you is that God would enlighten you. Open your understanding to see and believe beyond where you're at. And that you could understand God's power. Man, listen, if you could, if you could understand if God would, I mean, if your enlightenment and if your eyes and your spiritual eyes would be opened up to the potential of God, the way that you would walk, the way that you would function would be totally different than what you've ever done before. So place, place, lift your hands up. Lift your hands up right now. Pray this prayer. Say, Lord, help me to see beyond the natural. Help me to hear from you with more clarity. And Lord, help me to believe for that which seems impossible. Now listen, you can put your hands down. Why, why did I have you pray that prayer? Because a lot of times the prayers that we're praying are not conducive for us to see greater things. Are you with me? I remember one time I, I prayed and I said, Lord, I need to see. I need to see something that I have not seen before because of the situation that I'm in. And the Lord showed me angels that were around our home. You know what it did? It shot me into a faith and a belief, man, because then I knew, hey, God is absolutely in control of every situation and circumstance. Are you with me? But the reason why I say that is because we're so busy praying for other things that we're not praying and saying, God, reveal yourself to us. Show us yourself in a more powerful way. Are you with me? Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. And verse 17. Now this is talking about Abraham. Everybody remember Abraham? Look what it says. This is what the scriptures mean when God told him, meaning Abraham, I have made you the father of many nations. This happened because Abraham believed in the God who brings the dead back to life who creates new things out of nothing. Come on. In other words, he calls the things that are not as though they were. Isn't that what it says there? And he calleth those things which be not as though they were. God wants to call some things in your life that are not as though they were. Come on. Even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping, believing that he would become the father of many nations. For God said to him, that's how many descendants you will have. And Abraham's faith did not weaken, even though at about a hundred years of old or age, he figured his body was as good as dead. Come on, 
and we're complaining when we hit 60 or 70. (laughs) And so was Sarah's womb. Sarah was 150. No, I'm just kidding. That's not true. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger. Okay? Listen, this is the God doing impossible things, right? It says, and in this he brought glory to God. Verse 21, he was fully convinced. He was fully convinced. What? That God was able to do whatever he promises. And because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as righteous. Listen, he believed for the impossible. Even though, listen, even though it didn't happen when he wanted it to happen, he believed for the impossible. He held on to that. Amen? But this is the thing I want you to write down. He was convinced. You know, the Lord showed me that a lot of the messages and the things that we teach from this pulpit, God's word is always powerful. God's presence and his anointing is always powerful. But the Lord had showed me a long time ago, he said, it's really about convincing my children, my people, to believe what my word says. And then once you get it inside of you, then you can say, you know what? Just like Abraham, I'm I'm convinced. I'm not doubting. I'm not questioning. I'm convinced that God absolutely wants to do impossible things in my life. He wants, listen, can I tell you? God wants to show forth his strength more than you want him to show forth his strength. Okay? But how is it, how do we release that in our lives? Amen? We've got to begin to think and believe and pray beyond the norm in our lives. Amen? I mean, listen. How many of you have ever seen a miracle? Okay. How many of you want to see a miracle? How many of you want to see God moving in your life on a regular basis? Okay. It starts, listen, it starts with taking God out of the box and saying, well, God, God is not just there in church. He's not there just during worship. But God wants to show himself in my life in every possible way and show forth his strength and his power. Amen. Can you give the Lord a praise offering? I want you to stand to your feet. And I want to pray with you today because listen, we're talking about some really new stuff here, okay? It's not enough just to read about the miraculous and the impossible. It's not enough just for us to hear stories of other people like the person that put water in their gas tank and, you know. We need to begin to see these things in our lives. Are you with me? Some of you have been dealing with an illness. Some of you have been dealing with situations and things in your life. Listen, God is just saying, hey, Keep holding on and believing for the impossible. Okay? Because you could say, man, I've been to doctors. I've been, you know, I've been through this. I've been through that. And and I haven't seen that breakthrough. Okay? God is saying, believe for the hard things. Believe for the hard things because God wants to show himself powerful. God wants to show himself that he's able He wants to prove himself to his people. So stretch your hands towards heaven as we pray. Lord, I I release your anointing right now. Father, I know, I know that the battle is on. Over the mind, Lord God, and 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 Father God, I, I, I know the enemy wants to come and say, hey, you know what? God can't do that. God won't do that. God won't help you with that. But Lord. I pray that you do miracles 
I pray that you do the impossible. Lord, I pray that when the report comes back, that that which looked like, man, it looked like the end. It looked like it was over. It looked like there was no hope. It looked like everything was against us. Lord, as you opened up the Red Sea and the Israelites walked across on dry ground, Father, it was impossible for men, but it's possible with you. Lord, begin to do the impossible. Lord, build our faith. Increase our faith, Father God, to see what we have not yet seen. Experience what we have not yet experienced. Go where we have not gone before. And Father, we vow to give you the honor, the glory, the praise, Father, for what is about to come, Lord. Father, I thank you for breakthrough right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that's that someone's faith is rising up, that, Lord God, they're going to see the impossible possible. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Don't forget our Wednesday night.